welcome back. I love my dogs, but I gotta be honest, sometimes they smell. And most of the time, they shed. If you haven't met my dogs before, this is Zoe and Austin, and I have had Zoe for about 10 years. I've had Austin for 11. When you live with dogs, there's just some things that you kinda have to deal with. That being said, I've learned some little tips and tricks along the way to help keep my house clean and not smelling like a dog. So today I'm gonna bring you along as I clean sort of like my great room in our house, throwing in my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to keeping the house clean with dogs. Our house is not that big, but the downstairs, the majority of it is like one big room. It's like a kitchen, dining, living room space. It's where we spend most of our time in the house. So usually towards the end of the week, it starts to be a little bit messy and a little bit cluttered with things that I haven't picked up or put away. So let's go ahead and jump right in to this cleaning routine and get this house clean and ready for the weekend. All right, the first thing that I need to do is get myself into comfortable cleaning clothes. Hold on one second. All right, that's a lot better. Now, the next thing that we need to do is get some tunes because you, you can't clean without tunes. Hold on, are you, are you judging my playlist choices? If you haven't cleaned the house while listening to boy bands, you've been doing it wrong. All right, and then the final thing that you need to do is crack open a cold beer. Listen, I don't make the rules, okay? I just follow them. All right, fine, I do make them. But listen, once you are cleaning your house, listening to NSYNC and drinking a beer, you're gonna thank me. All right, now that we are properly situated, it's time to start cleaning. So what I like to do is I start by walking around and just cleaning up any of the clutter that's like anywhere. All the clutter that's accumulated throughout the week on my countertops, on my tables, I pick it up, I put it away where it's supposed to go. One of my favorite tricks for cleaning up my clutter is because I live in a two-story house, I have a basket that's my upstairs basket. So as I'm going around cleaning up, anything that belongs upstairs goes into the basket and then I can just throw it on my stairs and take it up and put it all away at one point. That way I'm not running up and down the stairs the entire time I'm cleaning. All right, once I have the majority of my clutter picked up, what I wanna do is pick up everything that's on the floor so I can get ready to clean the floors. So I'm gonna pick up anything on the floor that I can, including my throw rugs. I'm gonna take those outside and shake them off. And then I'm gonna to try to pick up as much of the little pieces of furniture as I can. So stools are gonna get stacked out of the way. I'm gonna pull my coffee table up and I'm gonna just try to get the floor sort of as clear as possible. And while I'm decluttering, this is usually when I also take out things like the recycling that's underneath the sink and I do any dishes that are in the kitchen. Okay, so at this point, I am now going to put down vacuum, vacuum booster all over my area rug. And I also use it on my upholstery as well. You can use baking soda if you want something that's a little more like all natural, but I find that this stuff that has the OxyClean in it really helps to penetrate deep down and it gets up that like dog smell that fabrics tend to get, especially if you have a dog like my little one that likes to get on the sofas. So you just sprinkle this stuff all over and then you wanna let it sit for at least 15 minutes while I let my carpet vacuum booster sit and soak in to the carpets, I'm going to move on to surfaces. And I'm basically going to just wipe down all of my surfaces. I'm gonna dry dust and then I'm also gonna wipe down using a method cleaner. I like the one that smells like mint. And I'm gonna focus on all of my surfaces. So counters, tabletops, but then I'm also gonna look for places that tend to accumulate dust and dog fur. Um, dog fur gets in like the most surprising places that you would never think that it would get. So like the tops of picture frames along window sills. I'm just going to basically wipe down anywhere that dust and dog fur might be. And I'm just gonna use a like dish towel rag to do this. I don't like to use paper towels because it's just really wasteful and they're really expensive. So I have these like old dish towels that I use and then I just throw them in the washing machine when I'm done. Alright, the last thing I'm going to do is clean out my sink. If you saw my kitchen hacks video, you know that I like to use baking soda to do this. All you need to do is put baking soda all over the entire stainless steel sink and then scrub it nice and All right, it is time to vacuum. Now, the real key for vacuuming a house when you have dogs is to get a proper vacuum. I don't know how many different vacuums we went through before we finally decided to splurge and get this Dyson one. And I think we probably spent $600 or a little more on it, but we've had it for well over eight years. I've never had to maintenance it. I just keep it clean and I take care of it. And this thing works amazing 
on dog hair. Using an inferior vacuum when you have lots of dog hair to vacuum up is pretty much just impossible. So I'm gonna vacuum up all the vacuum booster that I put into the throw rug, and then I'm also going to vacuum just the entire downstairs, I'm getting up all the dirt, all of the dog hair. I find that the handheld piece actually works best for getting a lot of my hard wood floors. I have one of the hardwood floor settings on this vacuum, but I just find that the handheld one works best for the dog hair. Sometimes if you use the floor vacuum setting, the air just sort of blows the hair around. So I like to go in with the handheld um, option first and get like all of the dog hair up. Then I'll go through with the floor setting afterwards. I'm also going to vacuum up the vacuum booster that I have put on all of my upholstery as well. Hey guys, it has been a second since um, I left you when I was vacuuming. It's actually the next day I had to take a break from cleaning, um, you know, because life happened. That's what happens. And it's actually a more realistic cleaning routine this way, to be honest, because I never really have like a dedicated three hours to just clean my house. So we're splitting it into two. I have new hair, um, so I look a little different. Shout out to my hairdresser. She's the best. You can follow her on Instagram right there. She's, you'll love her. So we are just going to pick right up where we had left off, and I'm going to move on to mopping. So for mopping, I keep it pretty simple. All I use is pine salt, and I dilute it with water, and then I just use like a good old-fashioned yarn-based mop, like a rope mop. And the reason I use this is I honestly find it is the best for um, mopping with dog hair. Even though I vacuum, and even if I mop immediately after I vacuum, there's always still a little bit of hair around. There's no way you can get up every single piece of hair. And I find things like the Swiffers or the pad-based mops, the minute they get a little bit of hair on them, they stop being effective. And I always find that so annoying. So I find that these kind of mops work best, honestly, because I can get a nice, good clean, but if a little bit of hair gets mixed up in there, it's not gonna totally you know, stop me from working, and then I can just rinse it out when I'm all done. And then while I let the floors dry, I go around and I wipe all of the baseboards as well as any of like the radiators along the bottom. These places always collect dog hair, so I always give them an additional wipe down with just like a wet cloth. Once my floors are dry, I use this um, floor protectant. What these do is they're gonna help to protect your hardwood floors. This is really great, especially if you have dogs sort of like walking around on your hard flo hardwood floors with their nails. This not only makes the floors look nice and shiny, but it's going to protect them as well. I don't always do the entire floor, but I definitely do my high traffic areas, like in front of the front door and in my kitchen. And then that's pretty much the final touches. I'll just go in, put everything sort of back together. I usually give everything like a little spray with maybe some Febreze, I'll light a candle. And at this point, I'm pretty done with my cleaning routine. That being said, I actually wanna leave you with just a few more tips. And these are sort of like everyday tasks Flash weekly tasks that you can do around the dogs that help keep the, the house a little bit cleaner. So the first thing I do is I always keep a towel hanging by the back door, which is the door that the dogs use. That way, if it's wet outside, if it's raining, before the dogs come in, I can wipe off their paws so they're not bringing in a lot of mud, especially my little dog, Austin. He's so close to the ground that if it's even just a little bit wet, his entire tummy is muddy when he comes in. So this way I can quickly wipe them off and it's gonna prevent more mud and dirt from getting into my house. The second thing that I do is I brush my dogs once a week, especially my larger dog, Zoe. She's one of those dogs that has that really thick undercoat that is constantly shedding. It's the hair that gets everywhere, all over the house. And by keeping her groomed and by brushing her, less of that shedded hair is going to end up on my floors and having to get vacuumed. Not to mention, that usually the hair that you're brushing out, that undercoat, by the time you're brushing it out, it's kind of like dead hair, and it's the hair that kind of will like develop that dog smell. So by keeping her brushed, it actually keeps her smelling nicer, longer as well. And even though Zoe hates to smell nice, I always give her a little spray with deodorizing spray. I, you wanna use one that's specifically for dogs because ones for people are much too drying on your dog's skin and coat. But I will use a dog deodorizer and it helps her smell nice and fresh. The thing that I do is I make sure I keep my dog's ears cleaned. This is kind of gross, but the buildup in your dog's ears is often one of the like sort of smelliest parts on your dogs. And by keeping their ears nice and clean, you're gonna cut down on that dog smell. So by keeping clean ears, your dog is going to smell a lot 
better. But that does it guys, that is my sort of average cleaning routine with dogs. As always, thank you so, so much for taking the time to stop by and watch this video. It honestly means the world to me, every person who stops by and watches. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel and you liked this video, I would love if you subscribed. I post new videos every single Sunday about things that will save you time or save you money. I will see you guys all in my next video next Sunday.